Uh, jobs in Alaska's seafood industry draw people from all over the globe, including far away Africa. Although the hours are long and the conditions can be dangerous, many say it is worth the hardship and risk to make money to send to relatives back home. Surafel Shiferao and Idi Legongo recently traveled to Alaska to meet uh, the immigrants working in Dutch Harbor, and Surafel has this report. Dutch Harbor is America's largest and busiest fishing port. In 2015, fishermen from the port caught 357 million kilograms of fish and other seafood, valued at $218 million. The industry draws people from all walks of life, including Somalian refugee Abdul Kani Hassan. Hassan first came to Dutch Harbor from Iowa in December 2016 and is now back for his second season, ready to brave the harsh conditions. Yeah, actually, when you knew, it is kind of, uh, you can face a lot of challenging, but when you become a uh, work for one season, another season is going to be okay for you. So nothing hard over here. It's kind of cold, maybe it's going to challenge you, but instead of very bad weather. Dutch Harbor, situated in the Aleutian Islands at the southern tip of Alaska, is not as frigid as other parts of the state, but it's very cold and has 221 days of rain or snow. Workers say the weather, along with the area's isolation and rural nature, causes great loneliness and boredom. The only thing they can do is work, seven days a week for up to 12 hours per shift, for a pay that starts at minimum wage of $9.75 per hour. Wasihun Kasahun is an Ethiopian who once worked in Dutch Harbor. After one season, he could no longer handle it mentally. I'm real to Kabbalo. I'm real to Kabbalo. My mind couldn't accept the situation. It was cold and tough. I lost my appetite. No matter how hard I try, you can't force your mind. The fish processing job are not for everybody, he added, but can offer some a way to improve their lives. That's the case of Ali Abdullah Ali, who is working to support his family in Somalia, 13,000 kilometers away. Sometimes I send my money back home to help my family, my mother, my brothers. So that's what I will do. You don't waste your money. You eat, you sleep for free. You just collect your money, stay. It's like, you know, it's like a prison, but it's not. You just collect your money, you know, like you make 15. Sam, who is Sudanese, believes workers are being treated unfairly and wants issues such as wages and worker safety looked at. It's not an easy job. Sometimes you can overwork, overdo, and if you're new and you don't used to it, I mean, I mean it leads you crazy or you can get injured or something like that. Still, workers seem willing to take the risk in hopes of building a better life. And for everyone who lives, another foreign worker, many of them Africans, will come to take his place. Well, joining me now to tell us more about working in America's largest and northernmost state is Sarafel uh, Shifferau. Uh, Sarafel, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you. Thank now, you. by their own confession, this place is extremely cold. It can be so lonely. What did they tell you drove them there in the first place? Yeah, the, you mean the workers go there for uh, to make more money. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's, the, that's the main thing. They go there. I mean, like they just had to go to Alaska. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of money, but <laughs> yeah. the, the fact on the ground is not is not is not uh, what you think. Yeah. There are two ways: some make money, some don't. But uh, the catch is like they work longer hours, uh, so and they have nothing to spend. This guy uh, described that as almost like being in prison. Yeah. Why? Why does he say that? Uh, you can't go anywhere. You work like 12 to 16 hours, then you sleep, and then you go back to work. So you have one uh, dormitory and uh, the factory, uh, the processing factory is next door. So you just... Who are these guys who are running these uh, activities? I mean, who are treating people like uh, prisoners? Yeah, th th there are, there are uh, like three or four big companies, yeah. fishing companies. So they have like uh, big, big fishing processors there. Yeah. And it's, and it's huge. They, they wouldn't let us in. It, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Like, we have emailed them. We just called them. And I even they wouldn't went. let you go. Yeah, there. Okay. But, uh, now, what else did you observe around that area that uh, uh, other Africans who may have gotten up there are uh, uh, doing? I, I observed only two things. One is there is a big labor exploitation. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot. They just want, don't, want us, don't want the media to come through and see what's going on. And the other is like, people think uh, you make money in Alaska, but you don't. 
Mm -hmm. Is there, was there any evidence of uh, government uh, kind of uh, uh, officials or, or, or maybe other agencies that are maybe trying to make sure people get a fair treatment? Yeah, the, some, one of the guys that I interviewed, he said that he fought it like for almost eight years for the raise of the minimum wage. Yeah. It was around eight dollars. Now they raised it to nine and nine sixty-five, close to that. Okay. And uh, are there a whole lot of Africans there? Anywhere? Yeah, there are a whole lot of Africans, especially East Africans. Yeah. And I have found also some people from Senegal and uh, Mali. So most most of the people are from Sudan, from Eastern Africa, Ethiopia. Uh, we have Somalia, a lot of Somalia people, even girls working there. Wow. I'm surprised. Yeah. Thank you very much for You're doing this fabulous piece and You're coming welcome. to share those thoughts with us. Thanks.